Okay, welcome to the Car Brothers Show. It's episode 101. I'm Jack. And I'm Jody. Thank you for joining us tonight for Car Brothers yeah. Show Live. I know, and Jeff sends his regrets. He's, uh, he's at an event tonight that he uh, had to, had a prior commitment to, so he wasn't uh, able to join us tonight. But uh, we'll get him on uh, hopefully next week, of course. Oh, and, yes. You know, <clears> so. <throat> and uh, tonight we have, uh, who's our guest? Well, first uh, I want to say Happy on. New Year. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we took a break last week, yeah. but we're back this week. Happy New Year 2024. Yeah. Um, did you set any New Year's resolutions? Or? Uh, no. 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 We try to avoid those New I, Year resolutions. Yeah, I, I start them a week or two before. Oh, and there you uh, go. And uh, ha get a head start. Get a little head start, and then they're not technically called New Year's resolutions. And just about habit forming, really. So, yes. And if a person can do that, they say 66 days in a row, then that creates a habit. So... So I'm on my path I to thought some of those. It was three so. weeks, hmm? 21 days. I thought it was 21 oh, well, days. Well, it could be. We'll, we'll see what our viewers think. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to know, too, if people can make comments. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe on Facebook. We're streamed, are we? I'm not sure if we're streamed there yet. Okay. We're going to double check that. Okay. And on uh, Facebook, but also what are the some of the channels we're on? Uh, oh, uh, well, we're on channel. I guess they're on the channel if, 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 if they're, they're watching. watching but, yeah. uh, but if they may want to know a variety, so we're on Facebook Live. Uh, we're on uh, our YouTube channel, and you can Google uh, Google that, uh, YouTube.com and the Car Brothers. And we're also on um, CHCO TV, which is New Brunswick's only independent TV channel, uh, local coverage, New Brunswick coverage. And that's on, if you have Bell 5, that's channel 26. If you're on Bell Satellite, you're on channel 539. And there's another channel if you're on Rogers and Charlotte County, which is southern New Brunswick for our international and Canadian viewers, that's uh, locally in Charlotte County, New Brunswick, that's Rogers. And there's different rules and laws, and we're hoping that, you know, that CHCO will be on all providers uh, throughout Canada. And that's that's something that we're hoping. And we've been pushing, as you know. What do you uh, mean, though, uh, we're the only community, CHCO is the only community television channel in New Brunswick? The only independent TV channel. Uh -huh. um, so you'd have, you know, of course, CTV, all the big ones, CTV, Global, um, CBC. Oh, yeah. Um, and then you'd uh, have um, CHCO, which is independently owned, oh. which is a private nonprofit right, TV with board channel. Board of directors. Yeah. <clears throat> and we have Pat, Patrick Watt, of course. Patrick Watt's our producer. Uh, and uh, he's the, the, I guess, the chair of CHCO TV and the manager, I guess, general manager. And we have Chad Ingram, who's our producer of our TV show rate right locally here in Fredericton. Right. So right. Chad and does a great job. And that's why we're in studio now. Right. Because we have Chad that's able to uh, facilitate this for us. And we we'll hope to have our, our guests in studio. Unfortunately, our guest that we have tonight, Joe, you can introduce. He was in New Brunswick not that long ago. It would have been great to have him right here with us, but he's in the province next door. But uh, in Canada, and Nova Scotia. So that's tell right. Us, we, tell us about Tony. Well, we have Tony Booty who's with us. He's uh, joining us live on Zoom from uh, Nova Scotia. But uh, he was in New Brunswick last week. We want to hear about that. Uh, the Minister of Education in Western Australia. Yeah. So our first international guest on the Car Brothers. It only took 100 shows, but yeah. uh, word got around the world. And uh, we're so happy to have uh, Tony with us. Minister Booty, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to be uh, with the Car Brothers. <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> that is so good. Now we've made the big time. We have our uh, first minister uh, from, yeah. uh, from Australia. It's wonderful. What do you, what do you, uh, what, what, tell us, what, what are you here, what are you here for in the Maritimes? Well, in many, in many respects, Jody, um, you, you are part of the reason that I ended up coming to New Brunswick. Um, as you mentioned, I'm, um, I'm a minister in the West Australian government, uh, minister for education, among other things, and um, looking at uh, how we can better educate um, our students That's with special right needs. Now. And um, New Brunswick, uh, New Brunswick is, uh, are among the world leaders in inclusive education and you've had a major part to uh, play in that, a very significant part to play. So it was great to join you and um, others that have been involved in that uh, reform in New Brunswick last week. And, um, and now I'm in Nova Scotia, uh, Halifax to be specific, uh, to learn about what they're doing in the area. Oh, that's great. And how long have you been Minister of Education uh, in Western Australia? Uh, just over 12 months. 12 months and um, um, how long have you been? You've been elected since, um, 
How long? 2010, yeah, October 2010. So we have four year terms, fixed, fixed four year terms. I, I actually got elected in a, a by election because uh, the sitting member of my um, my electorate, which you called a riding, uh, they retired, so I stood for the seat and, uh, and won. And um, been a minister since uh, March 2021. And um, now, um, you know, very, uh, very privileged to be the Minister of Education. Because as you know, Jody, you can attest to the fact that education is an incredibly por important portfolio and has a very significant role to play in the, the education um, of the next generation of students. Exactly, exactly. And we had a, a great chance to chat uh, last week in particular when you were in New Brunswick. And um, I'm just, I'm intrigued. I think we, you know, we've, we, you share that, or you have that passion for the importance of education you just mentioned, and uh, and using education as a leveling. You know, we talked about using it as a level, level, uh, leveler, I guess, or uh, to equal equalize, I guess, the 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 disadvantaged um, as well as obviously the advantaged, but to um, to use uh, as so as a part of social justice, I guess. Um, uh, tell me about yeah, where your passion. Where does your passion for education come from? I look at, I mean, I was a teacher, uh, but I think it's part of my own personal journey. I'm, I'm one of four children. Uh, my parents would have only received an elementary education. Uh, they wouldn't have received secondary education. And I'm the only one in my family to go above year 10. So like junior high school for, for people in New Brunswick. And uh, the opportunities that I've had in life as a result of that education compared to my siblings is chalk and cheese. So I know the transformative nature of education. And um, I, I, as far as provincial state governments are concerned, um, education is one area where governments can make a real positive change. Uh, so that's why I have that passion. And when it comes to inclusive education, particularly in regards to um, children with special needs. Um, I, you know, I have lived experiences uh, having a daughter who had special needs and uh, just feel that um, we need to do a better job in how we uh, educate uh, our students with special needs. And um, you know, as, I, as I said at the introduction, uh, in, in my introductory comments, uh, you are the world leaders in, in that space. So it was really good to be there last week to learn from you. And it's a, it's a very live debate in Australia because we had a Royal Commission, a five year Royal Commission on disabilities uh, that handed down their final report last uh, around last September. And there was a whole section on education and there was varying views among the commissions between whether we should go down, I suppose, something like the New Brunswick model where it's completely inclusive and no segregation or whether we should still um, have the uh, the choices or the uh, different systems in Western Australia. Because in Western Australia, we have special schools, we have what they call ed support centres, which are special schools that are co-located on, on a main campus, uh, but a, a separate principal. We have special ed units in mainstream schools, and then we have um, students with special needs in mainstream classes with uh, an EA. Um, so, <laughs> It's a hotly contested and contentious issue in WA, and it, it was just, it was really striking to be in New Brunswick last week, where it seemed to be just a fait accompli. I mean, not that things don't need to improve, but the fact that your philosophy and the fact that you have inclusive education, it's just accepted by everyone, including um, the teachers union. Well, that's, that's uh, great. It's Jack here, uh, Mr. Booty, uh, Jack, Jack Jode's uh, twin brother, of course, and uh, yeah. great to have you on our show and good to meet you for the very first time. Uh, great to, that you were in New Brunswick and um, I was uh, elected, I believe it was in a by-election, 2008, yes. so it's uh, right. kind of yeah. kind of uh, a kinship there, uh, we, getting your yeah. first election in a by-election, and we Jode was a big part of that, of course, of all my elections as well. But um, so how would you compare New Brunswick? You mentioned it already, and it must have been um, just a breath of fresh air, um, you know, and, a, and it's good for us because we do have our debates here in New Brunswick oh, yes. as well. But it's nice to hear because there's so many champions right from all the years through history. But our big commission would have been in the 1980s, I believe, when they were looking at uh, having uh, disability students with disabilities in the general classrooms. And um, and so that 
you know, a lot of champions there, but how would that compare when you met with New Brunswick and then now Nova Scotia and, and it doesn't give you some hope, some inspiration, some encouragement? Yeah, yeah I mean, it was, it was incredibly informative and uh, motivating and inspiration, inspirational to be, to be in New Brunswick last week. And some of the, um, you know, some of the uh, discussions and quotes that was mentioned by, there was uh, one person, a principal that I met uh, in New Brunswick who said that the, it's through the school system that you entrench attitudes and treatment of people with disabilities. So therefore your system where everyone's just included in the one system that then is car that's carried forward mm. into society. Nice. And, um, you know, and all the great work that inclusive uh, Canada is doing and uh, other organizations, uh, I think you just have a different mindset. Now it's interesting though, now comparing it to Nova Scotia, Okay. I think there's some uh, provincial rivalry between the two of you, though. <laughs> uh, uh, but it's they there's the, what I found when I was in New Brunswick, the inclusive education. There was a a, a great focus on the the special education part. So, in other words, students with disabilities, which which is what I came to New Brunswick and what I've come to Canada to to look at, but. Nova Scotia it seems to do it in a different way in the sense that they see it as only part of their inclusive um, strategy. They include the issue about the, uh, the First Nations, uh, the Nova Sco uh, African Nova Scotians and others. So it's only one part of the overall picture, uh, which, you know, has benefits. But I do sometimes worry uh, that disability can sometimes be relegated if you um, could. It's always so easy to relegate disabilities in the human rights framework. Often disabilities come down the ranking order, so you've got to be very careful about that. Well, there you go. And you're, uh, as you mentioned before, and if our viewers are just joining us, sometimes they join in a little late. We do have the education minister in the province of uh, Western Australia, which Tony Booty. And of course, with you, that concern of as a in a personal aspect as well of being a parent with a child with a disability is always making sure that disability issues are on the forefront and there's probably always a little bit of an underlining worry that rights will be diminished and you take steps back rather than te steps forward. I know Joe, you know, always, well, I, I wouldn't be knowledgeable as much as I am. Still lots to learn on disability issues if it wasn't for Joe, but Joe talks about that, that you always have to hold the line and, if, and keep pushing forward rather than falling back. Well, that's very much so. And um, yeah, and that's what I just found. So um, yeah, I don't think I've been in a province or in a jurisdiction uh, like New Brunswick, where it's just uh, it, the disability rights movement is just so strong, which is, you know, yeah. it's very, it was great to see. And also, I think you made a good point there uh, <clears throat> around your impression about uh, our approach to inclusion. I, I think sometimes in New Brunswick, we, we, um, we do mistake inclusion sometimes, meaning uh, being only about students with disabilities. But in fact, we, our policies do have in place that this, it is the wide range of diversity as, as Nova Scotia has focused on um, with your visit. Um, in fact, in our policy, we, we've, we did really don't use the word disability uh, so much, but um, of course, some of us that you meet maybe has that focus on, on disability more so, but uh, um, we'll have to go visit Nova Scotia and have a little chat <laughs> with them. But the difference as, as well that I wanted to mention, um, and of course, you know, New Brunswick, we still have our debates as well. There's people that are still seeking for that uh, equality of, of support in our education system. Uh, having policy and legislation is one thing, as you know, Minister, but then having the the, the implementation and, and the support required at the uh, school, at the classroom level for teachers uh, can be a, a big gap there. So we're we're always working or hearing about the need for improvements in New Brunswick too. So, so that's, that's good. Well, yeah. well that, yeah, that, that is right. And um, I mean, and also there is a difference between you and Nova Scotia in the sense that they still have a few private uh, separate oh. special schools. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they and in Nova Scotia, they also have the um, the voucher system where parents can um, take their tuition dollars and go to private special schools. Uh, that's something that New Brunswick has avoided doing as a, as we're strong proponents of public education mm -hmm. and an inclusive system. 
Um, and I think most of, the, well, all of the governments up till now believe in a publicly funded education system in New Brunswick that, uh, that doesn't divide and conquer our resources. Uh, if you start going with private vouchers, then you're siphoning off, uh, I guess, your, your community, down, your community. But at the same time, parents do want focused and specialized support. So that, that's often missing uh, a missing link in our schools practically because, as you know, you know you're trying to provide the best as you can, but um, more needs to be done. Mm. But in Australia and in your state, it's different than Canada. Um, you actually, you actually, the federal government actually has some responsibility, has responsibility for education as well. Whereas you noticed here in Canada, it's strictly a, a provincial jurisdiction, yeah. no federal involvement. That can be good and can be bad in different ways. But uh, tell us, tell us a little bit about mm. that perspective. You have to actually work with the minister um, nationally. The federal minister. Federal. That's right. So we have, we do have a, a federal minister for education, and we have the provincial, what we call state ministers for education. If Public education is still primarily a state responsibility, but we do receive some federal funding. Now, we also, unlike New Brunswick and even unlike Nova Scotia, we also have a lot of private schools. So in my state, we, we, we have a, West Australia is a population of about two and a half million people. We have about, we have a, around 837 public schools, and then we'll have at least two to 300 private schools. Now, the way it works is that the funding is that uh, when it comes to public education, the state provides most of the funding, about 80%, and the Commonwealth about 20%. When it comes to funding of private schools, the federal government provides about 80% and the state provides about 20%. So um, the, so, and obviously when one arm of government gives you money, they always have conditions <laughs> attached to it. Yes. So when the federal government are, are handing over the dollars, they will have some conditions attached to it. And we're about to enter a new round of negotiations yes. for the next agreement. Okay. And the federal minister has certain reforms that he wants uh, the states to sign up to. Right. And so the um, Disability Royal Commission, the, 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 the large commission you mentioned, five-year, um, that's probably an opportunity. It took five years to get this report. Um, that, do, you, do you feel that the federal government, the state governments are looking at that report in terms of renew when, when you renew these agreements or uh, you know, when you're building new schools or new programs, maybe yeah. looking at in, in, uh, equalization of, for students with disabilities and diverse needs? Yeah, look, I, I'm not so sure about the, the agreement that we're about to renegotiate, I'm not so sure the Royal Commission report will have that much input into that. Um, the federal government will not be holding a position that the states have to agree to uh, inclusive education because they don't necessarily have that position themselves. They have some reforms such as uh, reforms around teacher training, uh, okay, yes. around yeah, around well-being of students, uh, possibly also putting uh, money to assist with uh, um, tutoring, small class tutoring, uh, also the issue of uh, funding of allied services. Because as you remember, Jody, when I was there last week, I talked about uh, full service schools yes. where you use the school to bring in all these other services. So the federal government, I think, is interested in in that aspect of uh, what we're seeking to do, and I think it's going to be part of the reforms as well. Yeah, because you you were talking about full service where um, in, integrated service or, or whole yeah. student approach would take place at the local school where the student is located, uh, and, and you're quite uh, intrigued by that and looking at expanding. You've started it, you're looking at expanding maybe? or Exactly. Well, we have a number of schools that do it off their own, own, own initiative, uh, mm -hmm. so I'm looking at whether we can have it as more of a... Uh, uh, policy at the system level, mm -hmm. uh, maybe do it as a, a pilot uh, over a period of time because it would be you know, rather expensive, but I think over a period of time it probably has a cost-benefit analysis, mm -hmm. uh, a benefit because mm -hmm. if you have these services that low, uh, allocated at the schools, particularly in lower socio socioeconomic and marginalised communities, hopefully the outcomes will be of uh, economic and social benefit down the road. Down the road. Mm -hmm. Well, I, well, I'm listening to both of you. You know, we've got a former education minister in New Brunswick and current uh, education minister 
in Western Australia, and it's really refreshing. Well, first to hear Joe, I'd love to have him back right now as Education Minister, it'd be great. Yes. Um, and also Happy yourself to listening to you, Mr. Booty. Um, it's just, it's just, just uh, refreshing, inspiring, yeah. inspiring, and it's it's really, really great to, it's like-mindedness. You, you're impressed with, with New Brunswick and our system, and parts of and some of Nova Scotia as well but I'm impressed with you <laughs> yeah. I'd vote for you if I was yes. if I was in your riding <laughs> yes. uh, we'd be out there putting the yeah, signs I up we should whenever the next we should election go over to the is next election you. we should yeah. go over to the but, next election well I can well I'll hold you to that could we yes. have one you should come down in March March 2025 okay okay, okay. In now is there snow or no I don't you know is it nice and warm no, in Oh, nice perfect. It'll be, it'll, be, it'll be very warm. Very okay. Warm. We'll bring our shoes and our, our walking shoes. Door knock. Do you do no door knocking, I'm assuming, as well? No, I do door knocking, but I'll world. be unbeatable with the car brothers. <laughs> well, I'm, I think you're unbeatable now by the, by, you know, you had 57% of the vote in your by-election, yeah. which is really great, I think, because you don't get as many people, uh, voters out during the by-election. So I wanted to ask, though, you were finance minister in your first uh, yeah. ministerial role which I think is great to be finance minister. And you've talked about cost analysis and, and you know, all the things that, you know, uh, other ministers need to do and they present proposals to the finance minister and, and premier. But um, what was it like when you, cause I, I, I can sense your passion for education. What was it like when you were, you had the call or whatever text, whatever yeah. it was to be the education minister and reshuffled into education. What was going through your mind then? And what did you think? Well, I I changed my views. <laughs> uh, I remember being I remember sitting in um, what we call major projects uh, ERC uh, economic uh, review committee, and I had the education minister uh, pitching the need to build this school in a remote community, and right. I was um, testing her very uh, very closely. The, uh, the irony now is that she's the finance minister. Oh, no. the uh, so I keep telling her, you know, forget about what I said. Yeah, that's I right. Just remember what you used to say. <laughs> but it is slightly different. when in, in the in the state system, finance minister is not completely the same as your finance oh, okay. minister. We, uh, we our, that would be the treasurer. So you have a say. Uh, uh, that finance yes. minister has a say in, in things. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the finance minister <laughs> in our province, I, oh, I deal with... Okay. All, the all the government projects, you know, financing the government projects and the tax revenue, but the actual budgetary uh, parameters are set by the Treasurer. Okay. Yeah, and we have Treasury and Finance combined, same, basically. Same, yeah. Yeah. But well, we well, chatted too, and I think we probably could say what's in common between the finance ministers and our premiers in both state and province is that it really the premier has the final say. Right, yes. So exactly right. Yeah. Yes, the premier, <laughs> as, as um, I think I mentioned to you, Jody, last week, I was surprised when I became a minister, how um, important uh, Premier's office is. Relationship, <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what else was I gonna say? Well, we oh, got about five just, minutes oh, left too. Oh, really darn, just we could be here for another hour. Yeah. Um, well, uh, you've written, you've been, you're a law, you've been a law professor, a lawyer, a teacher, um, an author. Um, tell us about maybe quickly some of your books that you've written about. Uh, mm -hmm. And if we okay. get, and if the viewers can get copies on Copies, how do you get yeah. copies? Yeah. So, uh, so uh, yeah, so I've written a number of books, um, books uh, on what similar to your residential schools with your First yes. Nations, uh, we call our stolen generation. So, I've written two books on that, including a, a court case. Um, I've also wrote a book about a, a famous uh, gold swindle crime in in my province, and then my latest book is a personal account of raising a child with a special need. And um, so, and then I've done a number of co-author books on sports and the law because I'm a, a very passionate sports follower, and uh, combined that with my legal expertise and um, yeah, so, uh, you know, I've uh, got a few more books that I would like to write, and um, I've actually written a manuscript quite recently on voluntary assisted dying, which yes. um, I know is, uh, is a, 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 a yeah. hot debate in Canada in the, spent, in the sense of how far you're going to go down the road. I've got to say I, what I've read about uh, your possibility of allowing VAD for people with mental illness does does concern me, I yeah. have to be honest, and so it does concern me. But we had the debate about VAD a few years ago, and it's law in West Australia now. And I think the next, 
the next uh, debate on that's going to be this year about um, people with dementia. Right. Um, at the moment, so. that's not allowed. Yeah. No, yeah, 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 same with us, advanced directives. But as you say, uh, federal government here is, look, is, ex is talking about expanding or will soon be expanding if unless they reverse it, but to uh, mental illness and, and eventually mature minors as well. So wow. where does it stop? But your, your yeah. book about your daughter, it's called Akira. Akira. And yeah. um, I was really pleased that you presented me a, a copy of that last week to, uh, to me and to Krista, my wife. And uh, we thank you for that. And uh, we're, we've just gotten started to read that. But in the next week, while we're off on vacation, we'll finish, uh, we'll finish it and uh, follow back up with you to tell, uh, tell you our thoughts on that. No, well, no, thank you, and I, um, and I really am interested in your feedback and Krista's uh, in respect to that. Before we leave, because I know we're nearly finished, um, I mean, New Brunswick came into conversation in, in Western Australia after our 2021 election because we were the uh, sitting government and we, we won. Uh, we've, uh, we basically decimated the opposition. So the major opposition party, which is the Conservative Party, but in West Australia, it's called the Liberal Party. <laughs> um, they went down to two seats, uh, but there was also a, a, a Conservative Rural Party that had four seats. And someone said, yeah, has this ever happened before anywhere in the world? And someone said, well, actually, there's a province in Canada called New Brunswick where in, you know, in, in, uh, sometime in the 1980s, the ruling party lost every seat. Yes, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, so it was it was it was interesting to be there last week and yeah, for yeah. you to uh, relay that. Yeah, yeah, we have that in common too. In 1987, <laughs> they were wiped out. Too. That's right. And in 1993, we were down to two seats in federally, federally across Canada. Yeah, oh, and we, we also yeah. we ran into oh, and there was uh, Minister note. Booty, and I ran into uh, Minister Bud Berg. Oh, good. Uh, yes. Just uh, at, at, on the street, wow. but uh, it was so good to see him. Yes. Uh, and. Well, I remember Joe when, when Jody first ran. And you probably know Mr. Booty, but Joe and I were. I told him story. Yes, Jody and I were 19, and uh, yeah. first election, and um, Mr. Bud Bird came into the. I was there that day in the campaign yeah. headquarters, and everyone. You remember the ones, Joe, that were just completely against you, and you also remember oh, yes. the ones that um, were that were so were supportive with me right from the beginning. And Mr. Bird <laughs> came <laughs> he in, was. and he, he supported you, kind words, and a donation. Yep. And yep. that was, you know, 30, 30 years ago. So yep. you always have a warm heart yep. for Mr. Bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anything else you'd like to add, Mr. Booty? Oh, uh, look, it's just been, look, it's been, it's been a privilege and a pleasure to be in New Brunswick last week and now in Nova Scotia, but an absolute privilege to be on the Car Brothers uh, <laughs> podcast. I feel like that I've made the big time at last. <laughs> well, when Tony mentioned, oh, you've got the Car Brothers, I wish we could get on. And I said, well, I'm uh, last week we were, uh, we don't, we're, we're, uh, we don't have a show, but you never know. Anyways, I'm glad you were able to yeah. make it, Tony. And I'm, I'm really pleased we, we got to meet and I, I know we'll stay connected for sure. Uh, thank you so much for being with us tonight. And, uh, and we have a lot to learn from each other. Yeah. And I, and I can't wait to see you again in March 2025. Yes. I'm holding you to that. I <laughs> guess. See you then. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Cheers. Right. Well, that was great, Joe. That, that was. was a great uh, lineup of uh, having Mr. Booty on our show. And, of course, as you mentioned, he was in town last week. You and Krista got to meet him. Uh, I, you already knew him, but you got to meet him here and have him in the province. So. Yeah. Great. Well, exactly. thanks for lining that up. Well, thanks for uh, if, uh, thanks for having him. It was great. great. Very interesting. People oh, yeah. seem to like that kind of little something a little different. Yeah, and it just shows like we can uh, have more more in common, and here in our province, and there's there's jurisdictions all over the world that looks at New yes. Brunswick. I know we talk about how this and that and the yeah, other thing. We have we're challenges. Not good. We have challenges, yeah. but we have a lot to be proud of. Yeah, and uh, we we do not take a back seat no. and keep keep our heads low, and we have to keep pushing and fighting for equality for all of our students yes. and and looking at our commonalities and working together. Yeah. So it's well, great. great. Yeah, I it was good. Loved it. And I hope that the viewers loved it as well. And we can't wait to have you again next week. And also we'll have Jeff back and looking forward to that. So thanks to all our viewers for watching the Car Brothers. Have a good night.